Hi, this is Donna. Welcome to DD Paper Crafts. And in today's video, we're going to be making this hexagon shaped gift box with a detachable lid. The box at its widest point is six inches wide and at its widest point on the lid is four inches wide and it's just over four and a quarter inches high. But each of the panels are made individually so you can change up the size of this quite easily. It can be made with or without hexagon dies. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start with six pieces of cardstock, which measure three and a half by four and a half. Start with the cardstock with the four and a half inch along the top and score at half an inch and four inches. Rotate the cardstock and we're going to now score down to the half inch score line at half an inch, one inches and three inches. Rotate 180 degrees and we're going to score at three inches down to the half inch score line. Our piece currently looks like this and do make sure that your score lines go right down to the half inch score line. We're now going to create an additional score line between the end of the second, the one inch score line, diagonally down to the top of the score line at the bottom, which is now at half an inch. Now, if you feel comfortable, if like me, you've got one of your tracks marked on your scoreboard, line up the bottom of the one inch score line with your track on the scoreboard. Line up the bottom intersecting point with the track on your scoreboard and score. So that has joined up the bottom of that score line to the top of that score line. Alternatively, remove your piece from your scoreboard and use your ruler and stylus and join up the bottom of the one inch score line with the top of the score line at the bottom, like so. Fold over your bottom tab and burnish. Take your scissors and we'll start with the additional score line, the additional three score lines facing us. Cut down the outer, the first, second, third score line, like so and then cut across, removing that corner along to where the diagonal starts. So we've created a small blue tab here and we can just shape that whilst we've got that in front of us. Take your long scissors or you can use a trimmer. And again, if you're not comfortable, you can draw this line with a pencil first and then cut. I'm going to just line my scissors up with the end of the glue tab at the top and I'm going to cut diagonally down to the edge of the card. So I'm creating a glue tab. I'm going to take my small scissors, take a wedge from the end of that one, cut up and remove the bottom left hand corner, rotate and create a wedge, create a wedge at the bottom of here. So we currently look like this and then rotate the card stock. We're now going to work on the top, cut down the half inch score line and make sure that you do remove the score line. And then again, I'm going to take my scissors, line my scissors up against the bottom corner of the card here and cut diagonally up to the end of the score line that we've just cut into. So our piece, which started like this, now looks like this. So you want to do that six times. Now, obviously, if you cut your first two and you think it would be slightly easier for, do, for you to do your scoring and your cutting in a different order, that's perfectly fine. I've just shown you one way to achieve 
your piece which needs to end up this shape. So once you've got your piece, I'm going to fold under and burnish along the score lines. Just fold forward your top flap like so and fold under what's going to be the bottom glue tab. Now I've got my six pieces. We're now basically going to join up the pieces. I'm going to use tape. I've added all of the tape on and now I'm just going to join the pieces up. I'm going to start at the bottom, line up the bottom score lines. I find particularly when I'm using black card, if I just bend it back slightly, it just helps me to be able to see the score lines better, but that's might be more to do with my eyesight than anything else. And then just pulling the top. So continue all the way round. Join up the two ends. Fold the bottom tabs under. For the base, I'm going to use a hexagon die, which is slightly larger than I need, but I would prefer to stick the base on and then trim round. If we take the hexagon at the widest point, it's six and six and a quarter inches. If you don't have hexagon dies, what you can do is lay your get your piece into its shape. And sometimes it's easier to do that after you've added your decorative panels because that will add some rigidity to the box. Place your piece on your chosen cardstock and put your hand on the top and draw around with pencil and then cut it out. I've done that on quite a few projects, but in this particular instance, I'm going to use a die. I have added tape on, but I'm going to also add some construction glue over the top which is just going to give me a little bit of wiggle room so I'm just going to place that on the top line that up as much as I can and then I'm more than comfortable with going around with my craft knife and trimming off where I need to so whilst that's drying we'll work on the rim of the lid and I would suggest you get a strip of paper or scrap cardstock of the cardstock you're using to make the box and wrap it around the outside edge of the base. I followed exactly that process with a piece of scrap cardstock and I've just gone wrapped it around the top and just pinched and each of my sections is just over two inches. It's actually like two and one sixteenth of an inch. For my lid, I've cut myself two strips, which are six and three quarters by one inch. And I'm going to score at half an inch along the one inch side on both pieces. And then along the long side, I'm going to score at six and a quarter inches. I'm going to have the piece in the scoreboard with the half inch tab at the end and I want to score at every two and one sixteenth. I'm going to move my score line level with the one inch score mark and then move it back so it's in line with the notch here so it's sitting on the one sixteenth inch notch. And I'm then going to score at three. And that has given me my score line at two and one sixteenth. So I'm going to line the score line I've just made up with the three inch score line, move it back one sixteenth. So I moved it back so it's in line with the notch and I'm going to score at five inches. So my piece looks like so. I'm going to do the same with the other piece. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just join up the two pieces and then I'm going to retrofit. So with the half inch tab in front of me, 
cut up the half inch score line and remove the bottom square like so and then just create a glue tab. Do the same on the other piece. Fold along the long horizontal and as yet we're not going to burnish the other two and one sixteenth inch score lines. So I've got my two pieces. I'm going to join up the two pieces like so. Make sure that they do sit square on top of each other. I'm going to gently fold just to get this into shape and I'm just going to retrofit around just to make sure that before I go to the effort of cutting hexagons the lid is going to sit on the box which it is. So now I can go in and thoroughly burnish along the score lines. Now with the piece in front of us, so I've got my last glue tab on the top section, cut up each of the score lines within the bottom half inch tab, like so, and then cut a wedge from either ends to create your glue tabs. So now I'm going to take my base, fold the top glue tabs inwards, like so, add glue to your final glue tab, wrap the lip around, use the top tabs to hold the lid in position and just glue the lid lip into place so that is the shape that it needs to be. I'm going to just let that sit there and let that glue dry. Now once your glue's dry you can use this to create your hexagon for your lid. Alternatively if you have hexagon dies cut a hexagon and from cut edge to cut edge on the widest point this is four and one eighths four and one eighths of an inch. I'm going to cut two of those and then I'm going to trim off approximately a quarter of an inch around the edges on one of them and I'll use that on the inside to cover the tabs. Whilst my lid is on I'm just going to add my construction glue and then add on my top. I'm going to gently take the lid off just burnish down the tabs on the inside and then I'm going to take my second slightly smaller hexagon and sit that on the inside just to cover the glue tabs up and again I'm going to use my construction glue which is going to also add some strength to the lid. So now all that's left to do is decorate the outside of the box. Here's the finished box. I've added a Distress Oxide coloured sunflower and a bee onto the top and the bees just sat on a piece of acetate. I've had this and made this months ago and I've had it in my stash. I've covered the sides in sunflower and honeycomb effect cardstock and this is from Hunky Dory. And then I've got two additional bees which are actually on proper wobblers. By the time I'd got the lid on, with the colour and the shape of the box, it just shouted, screamed bees at me, hence the decoration I've gone for. I will at some point add an additional piece either into the base on the inside or onto the bottom here, because this is currently only one layer of cardstock. And overall, I'm really pleased with how this one's come out. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.